Well, just when I thought the traditional VHF Navcom was dead, Trig Avionics comes to AirVenture 2022 with a new VHF Navcom, and they make a pretty good case for our target market. Let's go talk to Andrew Davis. And we're here at Oshkosh, and the big news this time around is we have our new VHF Navcom, the TX56. That's uh, this guy here in the stack. Um, it matches all of our other products. It's based on our successful TY96 VHF com radio, but obviously adds a full VHF navigator. So it has VOR and ILS receivers built in. Some people say, you know, we've kind of moved on from the, the, the Navcom, but it still has an important role to play in, uh, in a modern cockpit. We see two real uh, applications for this. One is in uh, small classic trainers, the two-seaters, the Cessna 150, have one of those. This can actually be pretty much all of your stack along with a transponder because it has built-in intercom features, uh, uh, two-place intercom, all that kind of stuff, and can take aux audio in as well, so that can really uh, uh, be the whole thing. The other end of the spectrum is in, in guys who have navigators as their number one com uh, from Avidyne or, or, or something like that and need something as box two. So you need a second com radio, you need the second VHF nav in case something goes wrong with the first box. It's actually a requirement in, uh, in the part 23 rules. Uh, if you're going to fly IFR, you have to have two, two com radios. And so if you don't want to splash on a second navigator, one of these complements, uh, as I say, something like an IFD 540 really well. Big feature of it, in fact, is that it is very slim. It's just 1.3 inches high. Um, that's the same size as the old SL30. And so it does fit in your panel without using up too much panel real estate. So actually, yeah, big screen navigator, um, uh, TX56 underneath, and, uh, and that's a nice solution. So one of the things that we uh, worked on is compatibility with existing and uh, both legacy and modern navigation instruments. That can range from the, the old Bendix King uh, CDI that you might have in the airplane if you're upgrading or replacing a, a dying uh, KX155, something like that. The TX56 will drive an existing indicator, uh, KI204s, those kind of things. If you have something a little more modern, um, the, the OBS type indicators from, from Garmin and others, drives those. But more importantly, it will also drive much more modern things. We show it here driving a, an Aspen uh, display, but it also works with uh, things like G3X, uh, the Dynon Skyview and products like that. So all the way up through the modern glass, this can act as your, uh, your, your navigation device and it'll drive HSIs or all of that kind of stuff. So, so very comprehensive capability for, for retrofit. It also will uh, drive your old uh, Bendix King DME if you have one. So if you still have DME and you're using it to channel uh, a DME, it'll channel a DME as well. So all of those features from those legacy products are carried forward into the TX56. So the product's available in two versions. Uh, the TX56A is the standard 10 watt transmitter. It works in 14 volt or 28 volt airplanes. Um, and it's uh, 4480 uh, US dollars. The uh, big brother, if you like, is the TX57A. It has a 16 watt transmitter for a higher altitude airplanes, higher performance airplanes. It's 5175. The, the product is available now. It's shipping now. And in fact, there's a number of de our dealers here at uh, Oshkosh who have product in stock. So you can actually buy one here at the show. Uh, more information, check our website, www.trig-avionics.com.